Hi guys, um, today we're going to look at question 2 of the 2019 2.6 Chemical Reactivities 2019 Innovate Examination Paper. Alright, so this section I believe is on um, equilibrium. Um, it's one of the things I wanted to go through in my um, original plan, but I suppose people really, really want me to go through the examination papers because the exams are just around the corner. Um, so I will. Um, prioritize with the old exams first okay so let's have a look at this this is question two of the examination paper um, this is looking at the Haber process all right so this is writing KC I did do a video on KC so if you um, bit confused with KC KC it is a ratio between the products and reactants so what you do you put the products on the top and then the coefficient the, the two becomes the power and then n2 make sure it's not plus here it's multiply by the concentration of the reactants okay so that's a three as a coefficient so that becomes the power of three okay now use ex ex um, equilibrium principle why carrying out the Haber process at high pressure is advantage to the manufacturer so this is where you need to apply a bit of common sense okay so what do um, so this is making ammonia Okay, so NH3 is a oops, NH3 is ammonia, which is used in the manufacture of fertilizer. So ammonia is really really important. Um, so why do so what what would you think the factory owners or the manufacturers want to do? They want to make ammonia as quickly as they as they can. They want to make this to generate revenue. So essentially, what they want is that they want the equilibrium to shift this way. Okay, they want the system to not be at equilibrium and constantly shifting to the right to make more NH3. So why carrying this process at high pressure is an advantage to the manufacturer. So let's think about high pressure. High pressure, or just do one more step, because sometimes they don't have to tell you high pressure straight away, they can give you volume. Um, so if you have decreased volume, that means you have increased pressure or higher pressure okay because if you think about your chemistry class think about your chemistry classroom if like say if there's 30 of you um, in that class and then if i was a teacher i said okay let's half the classroom all 30 of you have to sit on the left hand side of the class so what have i done i have decreased the volume and i've increased the pressure because i've squeezed more particles in less space and then you will be colliding onto the container a lot harder therefore more pressure so According to Le Chatelier's principle, when you have high pressure, that means you favor, you favor the side, you favor the side with more gaseous particles. Uh, sorry, favor the side with less gas, uh, less gaseous particles. Gaseous particles. Because you, you need to think about what the Chatelier um, principle states. It's, it's, it's um, essentially saying if you have an equilibrium that's already been established, if you change something in the equilibrium, then the equilibrium will not be, uh, the system will not be at equilibrium anymore. And then what it does, you want to minimize the change that has occurred in the system to regain equilibrium. So if we increased pressure, Oops. If we increased pressure, how does the system minimize that? How does the system revert that change? So how does it reverse that change? So high pressure means you have more force hitting on the container wall. So how do we minimize that? Well, by having less gas particles. So it's kind of like going back to the chemistry examples room. If I have 30 students and I've been told that I can only use half of the space, then I, you know, if I have 30 people in half of the room, then the pressure would have increased. Then no one, not many, not everyone can fit. And this is where I got, all right, 10 of you, bugger off, go to the next classroom. So I favor the reaction with less particles and therefore I have decreased the pressure, which is reversing what the change is. Okay, so we favor the side with less gas, gas particles. So let's count. So on the left hand side, on the left hand side, this is four moles of gas. And on the right hand side, this is two moles of gas. All right, so just look at the number at the front. This is one, this is three, so that's four. This is two, this is two, so this is um, two moles of gas. So that means we're going to favor the right hand side. We are going to favor the right hand side because it's two moles versus four moles. 
that means the concentration of NH3 would increase. And that's a good thing because you want to make more. Okay, so if we look at the answers, so when there's an increase in pressure, this is a lot. Of, I kind of type this up. So this, if you're looking at the NCA marking schedule, this will look a little bit different. Um, I want to be a little bit more thorough. Um, so they're no longer at equilibrium. As you can see, I have not mentioned Le Chatelier's principle. Um, so I just stated what the principle, um, the key idea is. Okay, so shift to the side has has, has higher. Wait, I made a mistake in here. Good thing I check these. Let's fix it now. Okay, so to make it lower, as you can see, the Chatelier's principle is. A lot of people find this part a little bit more confusing because um, you have to understand this bit to. Because you can roll learn this as much as you want, but you have to understand this. Okay, and that's spelled wrong. Oh God, particles can't spell. Okay, so let's read this again. Apologies. So when there's an increase in pressure, the system will no longer be equilibrium. It will shift to the side that has lower number of moles of gas to minimize the change to reestablish equilibrium. So there are four moles of gas particles on the reactant side, the two moles on the product side. Therefore, the system will shift to the right, which has why shift to the right? Because it has a lower number of moles of gas particles, which means it favors the full reaction. Therefore, you increase the yield of ammonia, which is advantage. Um, to the yeah, manufacturer. Okay, so just remember the beauty of um, the Chatelier principle is that if you remember one, you can remember the other one. Like if you just remember, all right, higher pressure. If I increase pressure, I favor the side with more with less particles. Vice versa. If you want to, if you want to make, if you want to memorize, if I decrease pressure, I favor the side with more gas particles. Just memorize one. The other one's the opposite. Okay. So let's go through the next one. So let's have the equilibrium up here again. Plus N2 plus 3H2 goes to 2NH3. Two okay. In another part of the process, NH3 is removed. So what does that mean? So right now, this is at equilibrium. I've removed this. And then obviously, it is not at equilibrium anymore because I don't have this anymore. So what does this do to minimize the change? What does the system do to minimize the change? Well, what did we do? We removed NH3. What does the system want to do? It wants to make some NH3 to reverse this change, to minimize the change. So the system is going to shift to the right to make more NH3 because we lost all of it. And so the system will shift to the right. So this concentration will decrease, this concentration will decrease, and each three concentration will increase by a little bit. And and how is this advantage um, and, and an advantage to the manufacturer? Because you have produced more NH3, because that's what these guys want to do. Okay, so concentration is probably the easiest one to do. Um, so when you're removing NH3, the concentration of the products decreases, the system is no longer equilibrium. Uh, minimize the change by shifting to the. Why am I? Why are these so many typos in here? Um, you shift to the right. I think I read this. Um, you shift to the right to form more ammonia to re establish equilibrium. Therefore, it's an advantage because it maximizes um, the amount of ammonia produced. Okay? Because you've, if you just always remember, if you did something, if the system has been changed, then, then you want to minimize the change by doing the opposite. If you removed ammonia, you want to make more ammonia. Okay, so you shift to the right to make more ammonia. Okay, next one. Um, let's have a look at this. So this one's a little bit harder. All right. All right, so this is probably the hardest question. So when using equilibrium principle, whether the value of Kc would increase or decrease if the temperature of the reaction is increased. So this is a very this is as it as hard as it gets. Okay, and then this is a guaranteed excellence question. So first thing first, you have to understand one thing. When we let's just say, so what are we doing? We're increasing temperature. So if we increase temperature, if we increase temperature then the system will no longer be at equilibrium, okay? Because you you change something. So when you increase temperature, so that means the system now has more energy. 
because that's what temperature does. It measures the amount of energy. So if you increase temperature, there's more energy. So what does the system do? How does it minimize the increase of energy? By absorbing the energy. Okay, so the system will be, they will, they will want to absorb, absorbs the heat energy. Absorbs the heat energy. Okay, so the system absorbs the heat energy, therefore you favor the endothermic reaction. You favor the endothermic reaction. Oops, go back. Always remember this, okay? When you increase temperature, so there's more heat, there's more energy. The system is no longer equilibrium. How does it go back to equilibrium? By absorbing all of the actual energy into the system. So you favor endothermic reaction. Okay, so let's have a look at this reaction. What does this mean? This negative 92, this means the forward reaction, the forward reaction is negative 92 kilojoules per mole, which means it's exothermic reaction. That means the reverse reaction, the backwards reaction, or the reverse reaction or the left hand side reaction is positive 92 which is endothermic so let's think about this if we increase temperature if we increase temperature we favor endothermic reaction which reaction is endothermic the reverse reaction is endothermic therefore okay so therefore the reverse reaction will be favored reverse reaction is favored Okay, because we can tell from this delta RH. And when the reverse reaction is favored, what does that mean? This means we make more products, uh, sorry, make more reactants. Make more reactants. The concentration of the reactants is increased and you have less products. And what does that mean? This needs to go back to Kc. What's Kc again? Kc is products divided by reactants. If there's now more products and less react, uh, sorry, more reactants and less products, that means this number has gone down, this number has gone up. If you use a smaller number divided by a bigger number, Kc would therefore decrease. So this is how you figure out everything. Okay, so this is every single year I've, I've noticed in the past three to four years this particular question this type of question always shows up and it's a guaranteed excellence question you need to understand you need to be able to link the kc value or the or the or you know more products and more reactants linked to the kc and you need to combine that idea with the chatelier's principle and that is as hard as it gets okay so let's just quickly um walk through this question again. So we're saying we change increase temperature. When we increase temperature, we favor endothermic reaction to suck in all the extra energy. Okay, so, and then if we go back to the equilibrium, we can see the delta RH, this negative, this number is always for the full reaction. The full reaction is negative 92, the reverse reaction is positive 92. So we want to favor the endothermic reaction, so we favor the positive number. So that means we favor the backwards reaction. So the reverse reaction is favored, that means we make more reactants, that means we have less products. And then what does that mean in terms of Kc? When there's more reactants, less products, that means Kc decreases. So whether does the Kc increase or decrease? well it decreases okay so let's look at the wording of this particular question so as the temperature increases the system will no longer be at equilibrium and this is a very long question I just checked how long it is so as the temperature increases no longer it will favor the endothermic reaction to absorb some of the extra heat energy to minimize the change since the reaction has a negative delta h that means the full reaction is exothermic the indoor react the reverse reaction is endothermic so if you increase in temperature will cause the equilibrium to shift to the left therefore the concentration of the reactants will increase a higher concentration of reactants will cause the kc to decrease okay so make sure you get your head around it you can't road learn equilibrium you have to understand it you have to understand if you change something what does that mean to the system okay so you know rewatch this if you get stuck all right oh geez this is a very long question compared to question one um what are we doing here calculate the concentration okay so this is just a matter of substitution so they gave you the kc 
and make sure you can crunch your numbers in your calculators properly. So we have 8.3 or times 10 to the power of negative 10, which is the KC. If the concentration, okay, what are we trying to figure out? We're kind of figure out NO2. So NO2, oops, why did I square root that number? I have no idea. So we have NO2 squared divided by what's the concentration of N2? It's 0 0.110. What is the concentration of O2? It's 0 0.230. It's 0 0.230 squared. And then you should be able to multiply these two together. Okay, and then shift that to the right hand side. So that should be 8.30 times 10 to the power of negative 10 times 0 0.110 times 0 0.0230 squared, which equals NO2 squared. It's making something the subject. I mean, go to your math teacher if you still struggle with this, guys. I mean, you know, that's really um, year 9, year 10 stuff. I don't know. Um, so um, NO2 squared equals to 4.83 times 10 to the power negative 12 and then you square root 4.83 times 10 to the power negative 12 you should get 2.20 times 10 to the power negative 6 don't forget units most per liter now just remember kc has no unit you notice kc has no unit but all the other concentration has unit make sure you route to 3sf for the um, for the part of the excellence. All right, last one. Explain if the effect of case on KC if the concentration of nitrogen, so we kind of have to use this, don't we? Okay, so explain the effect of KC um, on KC if the concentration is increased. Okay, um, when we are changing KCs, oh, sorry, when we're changing concentration, just remember it says no calculation is required. KC only changes if temperature changes. Okay, so it doesn't change if concentration or pressure changes. Just remember that. The effect of KC is no effect. There's no effect if N2 is increased. So if you want to go back to the equilibrium, I mean, we can rewrite the equilibrium. So the equilibrium will be reactants plus products goes to uh, sorry reactants goes to like that will be the equilibrium yeah so if we can talk about the effect we can look at the n2 increasing so let's think about this this concentration this n2 is increased so what does that mean how does the system minimize the change it's going to use up some of the increased n2 concentration by shifting to the right so what does that mean um, you're going to make more NO2, you're going to have less O2, and this concentration will go down by a little bit, but these two, these new combinations dividing by each other will give you the same KC as what you had before. Okay, so same thing, so let's have a look at the answers. Um, it will shift to the right to use, oops. So when we increase N2, it will shift to the right to use up some of the added N2, that means more NO2 will be produced, but then the ratio of the concentration will remain the same because KC is only affected by changing temperature. Okay, so this is a very, very long question compared to question one. Um, and it's probably the most difficult part of this particular exam paper. So um, um, if you do need an, um, need more help, just um, ask in the comment section. Or I might do check the comments quite frequently. And um, smash the like button, leave a subscribe if, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.